Hello, <coughs> welcome students. Today we are looking at uh, a question that's economics, uh, the examination body is CASNEB. Uh, the paper is CPA foundation level, uh, stroke CIFA foundation level economics. Uh, the paper was taken on Tuesday, that is 20th of August 2024. It was an afternoon paper as, seen, as, as shown there. So we want to look at, at question five. Question 5 reads, explain three demerits of the reductive method of economic analysis. That's six marks. Then B, discuss three forms of economic integration in relation to international trade. That's another six marks. Then describe how the concept of opportunity cost is applied in decision making with respect to consumers with respect to farms, with respect to governance, and with respect to international trade. Now, that's the question uh, that we want to look at. And uh, uh, straight away, the solution uh, uh, is as shown. So the papers we have seen, it's one that was taken on such a date, and it's the same paper. So first thing, we look at demerits of the deductive method of economic analysis first. What is a deductive method of economic analysis? We know that uh, inferences in analysis, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, do analysis by having data, then uh, making inference out of the data that we have uh, to generalize on attributes that we encounter. Now, <laughs> on deductive method of economic analysis, we rely more on logic and reasoning rather than data. So, the difference between deductive method of economic analysis and a situation where we use data is that deductive, uh, and a situation where we use data is that deductive method of economic analysis follows kind of uh, logic and reasoning. But uh, 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 if we consider the other case, which is not deductive, the, the one that we are used to, that's of. Uh, uh, making uh, uh, inferences, then uh, we use data. So first, uh, what we see is that uh, when uh, a country relies on such a method to make uh, uh, to, to, to draw a, a base on which to make decision, then first we see that uh, mostly we are faced with unrealistic assumptions in such kind of uh, 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 analysis uh, settings. So this method often relies on simplified assumptions that may not hold true in real world scenarios because it's based on logic and reasoning. But you see, we have had a situations where, uh, uh, because mostly this now will be like a, a, a hypothesis, and we have, we have, we have seen situations where we, you, you, uh, a scientist or a researcher holds a particular, a particular view, and then when you collect data, we have seen situations where data says otherwise. So unrealistic assumptions, that is one major demerit, disadvantage of this particular uh, uh, method of economic analysis. Second is lack of empirical validation. Deductive reasoning can lead to conclusions that are not tested against actual data. So potentially resulting in inaccurate theories. Uh, yes, because one may say before, uh, for instance, one may say uh, without carrying out any uh, research, uh, through data collection to ascertain or to confirm a hypothesis that there are more females than male. Or one may suppose that we have, uh, that the aging population is, uh, uh, say, less than 20% of the population before carrying out uh, actual uh, uh, experiment. So lack of empirical data, uh, that's another demerit that we have. Then the third one is complex interdependencies. Economic phenomena are influenced by numerous variables that are hard to capture in a purely deductive framework. And that's why mostly when we are carrying out analysis uh, using data, we see situations where you are given the percentage uh, that uh, you are, the percentage of variation that is accounted for by your independent variables in your research. And you see there are cases where the model that you suggest will tell you that as much as you have included these factors to ex explain this particular variable, it is possible that you have left out a few others 
that may explain it. So, so uh, complex interdependencies simply uh, points to the fact that factors that would explain a particular phenomenon are, are many and each has a level of contribution in terms of having to contribute in the uh, general model, uh, uh, economic model that we are referring to. So uh, uh, general reasoning and uh, logic mostly does not incorporate uh, such factors. For instance, one may be interested in, um, <clears throat> if we want to say, we want to talk about factors. If we want to uh, talk about what may influence uh, a household's uh, level of demand, we may use several factors to explain that. One would be level of income. Uh, another one would be the size. So we can go on and on to list the factors. But as we list them, there's a possibility that, that we may leave out some. So in our analysis, the percentage of variation that is accounted for by our factors will be given. And that mostly, it's rarely uh, 99 or 100%. It's mostly 90 and we do with 70 plus. Uh, most of the time and we say that's okay but it simply points to the fact that there's a possibility that there are other factors and those factors are not incorporated when we use this kind of uh, 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 economic analysis approach so the fourth the fourth uh, demerit of uh, this kind of approach is that this method can be inf in inflexible as it may not easily adapt to new evidence that contradicts the initial assumptions uh, I should just say that we have uh, uh, we have been, we, we, we have lived and uh, observed uh, several characteristics of, uh, of 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 say doves, and uh, uh, we know that there are uh, there are various colors of doves that one uh, uh, might meet. But just because we have not seen a yellow dove does not mean that we rule out the possibility that it exists. But this kind of economic analysis does just that. It is inflexible. And so it actually leaves out the possibility of bringing up uh, new evidence to, uh, to, 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 to validate or not validate uh, the earlier uh, the earlier point of view. So uh, those are the four. Those are the four. The four. Those are the four demerits that we can give in terms of uh, 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 using a deductive method of economic analysis. One, unrealistic assumptions. Two, lack of empirical validation. Three, complex interdependencies. Four, rigidity. Next question had asked us to find forms of economic integration in relation. To international trade. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, had situations where we talk about various setups of economic integration and um, uh, I know uh, there is one that uh, this, uh, there's one that is struggling East African uh, uh, economic integration and uh, this one in particular relates to international trade. So one, free trade area. That is one form of economic integration in relation to international trade. So countries within a, a, an FTA agree to eliminate tariffs and trade barriers among themselves, but each maintains its own trade policies with non-members. That is one way. So if, uh, if, if say, uh, a particular country, say Kenya, is a member of, uh, uh, is a member, uh, of this FTA, then it can, it can do business within those boundaries, uh, tariff-free. And uh, the barriers, again, are also uh, regulated in a, in, in a friendly manner. So in that case, by being a member of FTA, that in a way helps uh, in uh, expanding the market uh, for uh, trade. Then uh, the two, 
Customs Union. Members not only remove inter internal trade barriers, but also adopt a common external tariff against non-member countries. <coughs> so member countries uh, enjoy certain privileges which are not available to non-member countries. And so that's why we say Customs Union. Three, common market. Beyond a customs union, a common market allows for the free movement of factors of production like labor and capital among member countries. Now, that has allows, uh, well, the, we have fixed factors of production, but uh, we also have ones which are not fixed like labor. Uh, so such can be shared uh, 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 across the boundaries uh, mutually. Uh, so in that, we talk about common market. Then um, um, we have economic union. This form integrates member economics economies even further by harmonizing economic policies such as monetary and fiscal policies among member states. <coughs> For instance, Kenya, East Africa region has been pursuing East Africa uh, community. And uh, the main view of having that one is uh, economic integration. I know there should be social, political, and uh, well, political is far-fetched, but economic, yes, is, uh, is, uh, is, is within reach. Social, again, has its challenges. But when we refer to economic uh, uh, integration, specifically economic union, then here we are referring to a situation where even the economies of the member countries kind of try to mirror uh, one another to, in terms of policies and uh, policies that relates to monetary and fiscal uh, strategies. So that makes uh, uh, that will make uh, doing business across the boundaries uh, seamless. The other one is political union, the most integrated form where member countries unify their political systems and the governance structures so political union uh well i know this is a, a, a case where we uh, which we observe mostly with the european countries and uh, one may be tempted to think uh, uh the european union uh, something like that so as much as it's a bigger it's a bigger economic base it also has a lot of political collective uh, political influence. So those are forms of economic integration in relation to international trade that we can, uh, that we witness. And so if you are asked this question, these are some of the, uh, the points that you, are, uh, you should have given one, free trade area. We see economic integration in that form, customs union. We also see it in common market. We see it in economic union. We also see it in political union. Well, Opportunity cost in decision making. First, what is opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is the cost of the next best foregone alternative. For example, buying a coffee means giving up the chance to buy a sandwich with that money. So how do we see it in firms' decision making? A firm considering investing in new machinery has to consider the opportunity cost, which could be the benefits it would have gained from investing that money elsewhere, like in marketing or research and development. So here, a firm is faced with a decision uh, whether to invest a particular sum of money on marketing or research and development or to invest in a new machinery. If <coughs> this company invests in a new machinery, then the opportunity cost is uh, uh, marketing or research and development. If it decides to go marketing or research and development, then the opportunity cost becomes having to invest in a new machinery. So uh, uh, opportunity cost simply arises because of scarcity and the fact that we have to make choice. And again, those three terms, scarcity, choice, and opportunity cost, that uh, ably defines what we mean by uh, uh, what we understand and study in economics. So second, uh, so we see that in farms. Uh, but again, in consumers, when a customer chooses to buy well and say coffee or that, then that uh, applies to consumers. Then governance, for governments, opportunity cost comes into play in budget allocation. Funding a new infrastructure project means there may be less money available for healthcare or education or completion of, an, of, of ongoing projects. 
So the government has to make a decision when uh, uh, resources are being allocated. Uh, what do you prioritize? Because mostly uh, the government has sources of, uh, uh, of revenue and those sources of revenue are uh, limited. But then the priority list in terms of what comes from the people is, uh, is big. And so choices have to, be, uh, have to be made. And these choices are myriad. You can see some of them in terms of new infrastructure projects. Some are, uh, uh, are ongoing, having to complete ongoing. Some are stalled, etc. So having to make a decision between what comes first there will be an element of opportunity cost because if you choose A, it means you forego B. Uh, that's that. Then international trade. We see this, okay, countries engage in trade based uh, on the concept of opportunity cost. Exporting goods they produce most efficiently and importing those that would be more costly to produce uh, domestically. Then again, this also has to do with uh, having to leverage on competitive advantage. You, comp you concentrate on what you do best and uh, that gives you uh, optimum or uh, and then buy that which you are not good at, uh, at producing. So those are the four areas where we see opportunity cost in decision making. So up to there, thank you. That uh, is uh, the solution to the question that we had. And uh, you can visit uh, my YouTube channel, Examprep Math Hub, and uh, 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 subscribe. Or you can WhatsApp me or send me an email if you have, you have further, uh, further clarifications for, to, for, for, for me to make. Otherwise, let's meet in another, another video.